One afternoon, while a young boy was playing in the park, he noticed an old man standing quietly, looking over the edge of a large tank used to collect rainwater for watering the grass and the plants in the park. He was captivated at the sight of the old man who appeared prayerfully, prayerfully peering into the tank. Intrigued about what the old man was looking at, the boy edged up to the tank next to the old man and tried to see over the ledge, but it was too high. The old man noticed the boy on his tiptoes trying to see over the edge. Would you like to see, he asked the boy. With large shovel-like hands, the old man lifted him up to see over the ledge. Do you know who lives there, the old man asked. The boy shook his head. God lives there, look. But the boy only saw his reflection in the still water. But that's me, said the boy. That's right, said the old man. Now you know where God lives. Last Sunday, we celebrated the ascension of the Lord Jesus into heaven. Today, we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit on the apostles and the birth of the church. Today, we come to the high point of our Easter celebration. This is the conclusion of the Holy 50 Days and marks the exaltation of Jesus and the giving of the Holy Spirit by Christ who was glorified. Pentecost that we celebrate today was also the feast day in which the Jewish people would celebrate the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. When on Mount Sinai, the tribes of Israel entered into a covenant with God and with one another, so becoming the people of God. For us, Christ brought the Holy Spirit to the apostles and sent them out to all nations, not just to God's chosen people, but to Jews and Gentiles alike allowing all who would seek God to enter into a very personal relationship and be welcomed into his promise of salvation, now not just for the chosen ones, but for everyone. Pentecost is not only the feast reminding us of the coming of the Holy Spirit, the holy 50 days after the resurrection, it's also to remind us that it's the Spirit that is the driving force of the church and every baptized Christian. The spirit which Jesus gives as a gift to the apostles, it's the same spirit at work in our present time. Just like the boy seeing his reflection in the tank of rainwater and the old man telling him, now he knows where God lives, so too as we hear the Holy Spirit descending on the apostles, we should be reminded of how the Holy Spirit that descended upon them also reflects the same Holy Spirit in each and every one of us. God through the Holy Spirit, alive and living in each and every one of us. Bishop Fulton Sheen actually had a play on words at once said about the church that even though we are God's chosen people, we often behave more like God's frozen people. God's frozen people indeed, frozen in our prayer life, maybe in the way we relate to one another, frozen in the way we celebrate our faith, we don't always seem to be happy in God's house. We're always kind of in a hurry to get it over and done with as soon as possible. Today's a great day to ask the Holy Spirit to rekindle in us the spirit of a new life and enthusiasm, the fire of God's love. Today we can ask ourselves, what does the Holy Spirit want me to do? Where is he leading me in my life? I believe it's important to reflect on these questions, especially now that our world's become so complex with information overload. We have so many things coming at us telling us what we should and shouldn't do. We should strive to pay attention to the Holy Spirit because it's present. he's present in each and every one of us, and we should learn to listen to him and let him lead us to show us the best way to live our lives in this crazy world. As the old man prayerfully pondered the presence of the Lord in himself and shared that wisdom with the little boy, let us also prayerfully reflect on the presence of the Holy Spirit within us and remember the first Pentecost. Let us remember that the apostles were ordinary men with hopes and fears, just like us, but they were called to do extraordinary things and by choosing to let the Holy Spirit lead them out of the upper room into the world, they fulfilled their vocation. As we prepare to come into the presence of our Lord, let us pray that the Holy Spirit would fill our minds and our hearts to be courageous as we head back out into the world to serve our family, friends, and the people around us.
O Lord, send forth your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Hallelujah.